On today's show, we head north to Lake of the Woods on an uncharted fishing excursion to a place called Black Island. Does having your own island make the fishing better? We'll take a cast and find out. And Laura Shera steps into nature's outdoor kitchen as she takes on a walleye recipe over an outdoor fire. And how about a little crawfish sauce on the side? Our Minnesota Bound Classic follows a father and daughter as they decide to head out on their first fly fishing adventure. Just remember, it's all in the wrist. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota's Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. Raven's panting a little bit, I think it's kind of warm. Maybe we should head north. Which brings up our first story, a fishing adventure to a place called Black Island. Bill Shirk has the story. Getting out of bed is easy when a Lake of the Woods sunup looks like this. It's like a lun parade. Ballard's anglers head for quiet water. Another beautiful morning. Pretty easy to wake up and get excited to go fishing. So where are we going? To the right, down right. the old Sunset Channel. Yeah. We're in the middle of all the islands and it's, it's just a real scenic, beautiful place with a lot of fishing potential all around it. You know, it's a great spot. We zip west a few miles and end up here. It's a channel called Painted Rock. This is a spot where the Indians drew some pictures on the rock. History surrounds this entire lake. It's pretty cool though. It kind of does look like a fish on the bottom. Big old musky or something. I brought my smalling net. I heard they're pretty big here. A little ways up, a not so secret fishing spot called North Island. The green. This morning, that's it. we've got bass on the brain. Come on, smallies. Yeah, the smallies, you know, obviously that's that's a blast, casting up shallow on them shorelines, and can't beat that fight. I mean, that's pound for pound a pretty good fish. If we can get the darn things to bite. Now, and I'm thinking, you know what? Piece of cake. We're going to go out and fish for a couple hours, take 25 fish, good to go, and we'll musky fish. <laughs> well, it turns out Lake of the Woods had other plans for us. Look at these rocks right there. Be one. Nick and I are throwing everything. And I'm thinking, really? Smallmouth bass, they're not supposed to be this tough. It's always a puzzle. And even when you think it's gonna be easy, sometimes it's not. Which is why we make a change. Mark and fish. Out on a mid-lake hump, we hunker down. 28 feet. And get to a little jiggy. Fish on. Whack. You know, we fished that hump for like a half an hour and it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Oh, son, fish on! <laughs> Every time you get that, boom, it feels like the first time. I love it. Talk to me, Goose. Wow, where'd that come from? Fish on! or luck starting to change. There are piles of fish on every one of these reefs. But the dinner bell calls us home. All right, so who got the big fish then? You did? Days on Ballard's Black Island seem to kind of pass with a blur. There's something magical here. It's almost palpable. You know, you kind of end your day around the campfire. The woods are alive with the sounds of the wild, and you just kind of relax, and you think, Black Island, <laughs> I'm in a good place. Up next, Black Island's fishing serves up some unexpected curveballs for our Minnesota bound fishing crew. There's and as you'll out. see, what? some unexpected help. Minnesota bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Connecticut. And by Rapala. 
GMC Terrain, Color Touch Sound System, Bluetooth Connectivity. Call Jen. This is smart. OnStar App Ready. The 2013 GMC Terrain, over 100 standard features that make you more capable. That's professional grade. Lease this 2013 Terrain with an EPA estimated 32 highway NPG for around $199 per month. Time now to head back to our Lake of the Woods fishing adventure. The angling has been a little tough. Let's see if that'll change. Lake of the Woods. We've caught essentially everything that swims in this inland sea, except for what I would consider the yeah. easiest of prey. Never felt so much pressure to catch a bass in my life. <laughs> Nick Anthony and I have been trying way too hard to catch a couple of darn bass. Oh, this is just weird. I don't even know what to say. So we've been trying to catch smallmouth bass for, what, six and a half days? <laughs> at least a month, it feels like. So we're like at the end of our rope. And all of a sudden, we see this boat coming from the north. And I'm thinking, that's Gary. Where's the bass? <laughs> you got one? Not one. That's Gary Moeller. He works at Ballard's, too. And Gary pulls up to us and says, hey, you want me to show you where all the fish are? We're like, yeah, let's go now. Yeah, yep. we're going to come. Take us right there, and you can fish right by us. Yep. Let's go. We're following these guys because they're the only ones who can catch a smallmouth bass. These guys pull in, boom. Like 20 seconds in, they're hooked up. They just have one cast, one fish, yeah. so they're 100%. There's one. Oh. What? Good. No. And Nick and I are sitting there going, never. Really? <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gary, from now on, we're calling him Destiny. Here's the thing. It wasn't about the where we were fishing. We were doing all that right, but it was the size of the baits we were using. We downsized to smaller baits. The thing's like a third of the size of what I've been using. And cast. What just, happened? Oh. what just happened? Smalley time. No. Wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> and like that, Smalley, Lake of the Woods shines. Future stock. I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even breathe. I gotta keep it. Oh. Love that. Wow. Every story has a happy end. What was that, second cast? <laughs> second cast. No, first cast with this bait. I'm going back there. You want to talk about crazy fish tails? We're in the middle of it right here. We're hooked up. Fish, fish, fish. We're hooked up. Fish, fish. Nice smally. Nice smally. <laughs> fish out! Look at that. Fish out! Woo! Check it out. It's a miracle. Is that what we've been looking for for the last three hours? Yeah. Thanks, Dolly. Woo! This is one of the craziest fish tails I've ever been a part of. Right here, right now. Oh, just missed. Just missed a muskie. I don't think I stung him. Say fish on. Fish out! <laughs> ooh, ooh, we're getting the net for him. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, man. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> Smalley time. And on the seventh day, there was a fish. <laughs> this is such an awesome, awesome tale of lows and highs. Exactly why we come to places like Black Island. This has been an awesome trip. You're still out on your own island in the middle of nowhere, and you kind of feel like you're alone out here. If you want adventure, if you want 
big fish, lots of fish, nice cabins, and your own island, Black Island is kind of the place. It's a great, great adventure every day. Starting the coals early, start that fire early, let it cook down. Into Ever wonder how to cook walleye over an open fire? Well, Laura Shera and Jeff Jim Kinberg take on the task with tasty results. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. the yard maintenance free furniture comfort elegance and recycling combined call today for your free catalog or go online to buytheyard.net time now to head to the kitchen wild in the kitchen where Laura Shera has something cooking I think it's walleye and that's all I need to know. Hey, thanks, Dad. Well, today we're getting wild in the caveman kitchen because we're cooking outside today. And I'm here with Jim Kinberg, who's executive chef of Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Lounge. And Jim, I understand we're cooking Minnesota-grown walleye and crayfish today. We are. Very local dinner we're preparing. They pinch if you're not careful. Fantastic. And what are the first steps to getting this type of stovetop ready? Cooking over a campfire is probably the most primitive method of cooking possible. The one thing I will advise you is starting the coals early. Start that fire early, let it cook down into coals. It'll give you a nice base heat to cook over. And I see you have some beer boiling here. It's about to boil. We do. We have some local crawfish. These are actually the uh, invasive species that we want to cook up and get out of our lakes. These are the rusties. They call them rusties because they have that little rusty color. They got little pinchers, but delicious crawfish. So we're going to make a meal out of these today. Make a little sauce, put it over the pan fried walleye. All right, let's get started. Okay. So I see we have the hot skillet ready to go. Yeah, we put the grate down. We got the skillet on top of those coals. We're going to put a little bit of oil right in that pan, and we're just going to wait for that oil to start sizzling. And what kind of oil are you using? Olive oil. So we're waiting for the oil to get hot. Yep. And now, what type of breading are you using on my Minnesota favorite fish, <laughs> the walleye? Well, this is straight off our Fire Lake menu. This is our classic kind of shore lunch. We soak in a little buttermilk, seasoned cornmeal, and just uh, give it a nice, thin little crisp crust. Keep it simple is the theme. Exactly. So it looks like our oil is ready. Our oil is ready. You want to hear that nice sizzle when you put it in the pan. I like cooking with cast iron over the campfire. Number one, if it gets black, it doesn't matter because it's already black. Number two, it's nice and thick, so it holds in that heat, keeps a nice steady heat to it. So as the walleye is getting crispier in the pan, this is a great time to start our crawfish. So we've got a little beer that's boiling right over the coals there. And we'll just dump these guys right in there. All right, so let's check underneath and it should be nice and golden brown, just like that. Delicious. All right, so you can tell our walleye is done, firm to the touch. It's got a nice crispy golden crust on both sides. And then with the crawfish, you can always tell when these guys are done when they turn bright red like that. So that's what we're looking for. They're about as close to lobster as we can get in Minnesota. And now we're going to cook a sauce right in the skillet? We are. So what I've done is I've taken some crawfish I already cooked off and just took the tail meat out. So that's what we're going to use as kind of the base. Throw those guys right in there. Take some diced tomatoes. Got some green onions. And then we're just going to hit that with a little bit of heavy cream. Take some of that beer that we simmered. So we're just going to let this kind of cook down, reduce, thicken up, let all those flavors come together, and then we'll pour it right over the fish. Look at that. So easy, so delicious, and look how gourmet you can be. Around the campfire. Around the campfire. Jim, this looks amazingly delicious. Thank you. And if you too want to impress your friends, go out and get wild in the caveman kitchen. It's easy to do. And an abrupt stop. Coming up, our classic follows a father and daughter team as they take up their first fly fishing lesson together. 
Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center, Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition, Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. What are some common misconceptions random people in Minneapolis have about farming today? Let's find out. I would like to ask farmers if they could go back to the way it was. To go back to the old days isn't a real valid statement. We might have bigger machines, we might use nutrients, but our carbon footprint per acre, per bushel today, is so much less than it was in the 70s and the 50s. Get to know more about how Minnesota farmers practice responsible, ethical agriculture for life at therealstorymn.com. Welcome back. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes us to a magical place called Seven Pines. Sadly, Seven Pines is no longer operating, but the guide you're going to meet in this story still will take you to learn how to fish for trout. <laughs> Kelly McDonald of Lion Lakes, Minnesota is about to try well, fly fishing for the first time. Okay. What's this big thing That's in the her, back for? checking out a few thingamajigs she's never yeah, seen before. Back, 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 back pause. Meet forward, Dan Brown. Forward, he teaches fly fishing at a secluded setting in northwestern Wisconsin, a place called Seven Pines Lodge. And an abrupt stop to the rod. Joining Kelly for this fishing stop, lesson is her father, Jim McDonald. All we need to do to set the hook is raise the rod. He's overhead. a veteran when it comes to fishing. Center but a rookie the, with a fly rod. The uh, diameter of the line and the weight. This bonding really moment was Kelly's idea, a birthday Kelly. present to her father, an adventure into the unknowns of fly fishing. You make it look so easy. <laughs> well, just <laughs> keep at it for 33 years. And... <laughs> 33 years. <laughs> years. <laughs> so begins a new fishing experience in a very historic setting. That's a fairly rare place dating back more than a century ago when Charles Lewis bought this lodge in 1897. It was Lewis's dream uh, to have a um, back to nature um, retreat uh, where he could fly fish and um, enjoy nature. It's a big responsibility somehow to keep that tradition going and, and so people can enjoy it. And just as important, this picturesque stream and its trout fishing tradition also have been preserved. <laughs> Comes full circle, and that's good. This was kind of a 70th birthday, and I figure I'm good for 30 more. Yep. <laughs> I would say a good 80% of the folks I instruct have never picked up a fly rod in their life. Uh, so it's a challenge. I enjoy the teaching process. You get a perfect cast. You just, oh, that uh, yes, because when I say But new, the challenge today is twofold. Can these novices actually cast a fly rod and actually nice catch a trout without cast. hooking themselves? Yeah, that looks, that looks fantastic. I am very new to this. Dad would hook my, put a worm on my hook and put it in the water for me. And, and that was about the extent of it. So what we'll do, here, we're going to fish that, that skinny water. If you're a trout, all the food that comes down the current is funneled right into that bottleneck. And so, father and daughter together waded into their own twilight zone. There, now let it come. And then, like magic, the pieces of this fishing puzzle okay, pick up that set. came together. You got one. Hey! Everything I told you about, uh, <laughs> whoa, and a quick release. Soon another trot was on. Set it, oh. set it. Oh, there's a strip of it, yes, look at that. Yay, it's wide Yay. trout. Yay. And another lesson landed. You did that perfect. It's pretty. Beautiful rainbow. Then it was Dad's turn. So there's a good start. There. Bam! Oh, Way! Oh, 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 not supposed to be oh, that easy. First cast. What the heck? <laughs> By golly. Natural. So went their day, father and daughter, on a path of discovery, new and different, in a setting old and established. Ooh! Now we got one. 
<laughs> it's a beautiful brook trout. Here, bring him over this way. There he comes. All right. That's a beautiful brook trout. But it's been a fun opportunity, and I've really enjoyed it. And, and I'm going to continue with the fly fishing now that I've got the basics. Okay. Now just. It's a little trickier than I thought. Casting is. There's definitely a, a rhythm to it. With a lot of practice, you can get it. It's very kind of spiritual. It's very fun. Spiritual, fun. Set it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Those who never try will never know. Scoofed up my guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> I had to really work for this one. See, if I keep saying guarantee sooner or later, <laughs> oh, I'm going to run out of luck. But not today. There we go. Beautiful fish. The old hotel is still waiting for new life, but those trout in that stream, they're still biting. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid of the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sherrod, and my very warm dog, and the star of the show is Raven. Yeah. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.